Greetings and welcome to a new video about inverters. In this example we will discuss the two source multi-level inverter. So we will have two DC voltage sources and we also use two full bridge inverters to create our load voltage and also the load current. Again we will consider the RL load in a series combination. Of course we will see that in our calculations step by step and also verify our calculations using MATLAB Simulink simulations. Now this is our circuit in general we see two DC volt sources each 100 volts we see the load series RL again the values are shown here we have a switching frequency of 60 Hertz in addition we use delay angles two delay angles alpha 1 20 degrees and alpha 2 or 40 degrees and we would like to calculate for this circuit the RMS load voltage the RMS load current the THT for the load voltage the THT for the load current that is the total harmonic distortion and the final one is our modulation index. Okay, so first in general about the waveforms. This is the load voltage waveform. You see actually it's operating between 2VDC and minus 2VDC. And because of this alpha 1 and alpha 2, you see here the staircase waveforms. So it is now coming closer actually to a pure sine wave as we wanted. And this is the individual waveforms for the VO1 that's actually shown here and this is the VO2 individual and if you place it on top of each other you create this red curve. Now let's look at the solutions, the calculations first. Now for the Fourier series of our load voltage having a two uh, source inverter that is given by this expression. Again we need the amplitudes that is the most important part of our analysis and those are the VONs. And again, only the odd harmonics. So what are the amplitudes of our load voltage harmonics? And those are given by this expression. Remember we had for the delay angle, only one delay angle. We had here four times VDC over M pi times the cosine of N alpha. That's just one alpha. In this case, we have another one because we have two alphas. And if there are no delay angles, so no harmonic or amplitude control, this harmonic will be just four times VDC over M pi. And we have seen that in the full bridge square wave inverters. Now, looking at the impedance of this circuit, this is then the series combination of the resistor and the inductor. So this is the impedance. Again, uh, this is determined by the resistor value and the inductor value, and also the switching frequency, omega zero, which is given here, and also the index N, which is our harmonic number. And the amplitude of the load current harmonics are determined from Ohm's law. And we know what VON is, this is the expression, we know what the impedance is, you can actually use it in this formula and make it one compact formula for your load current harmonics as shown here. Okay, let's now start with the RMS load voltage. Now the definition for the RMS is given by this, this is a really general definition. I prefer always to start here, but then I will also look at the waveform and maybe I can speed up my calculation. What I see is that the alpha 1 is actually here and this part is repeating also here and again here and again here. So there are actually four times the same uh, area. And for the alpha 2 up to pi minus alpha 2 I have this area which is repeating here too. So I have two times the same area there. So maybe we can do it like that. So I divide the problem again in two pieces. And I say, okay, it is four times the complete period, but from alpha one to alpha two, so that's just this part, so I only consider this uh, region, this area, this square, and I integrate using the amplitude of VDC. But I know it is four times, so it will be four times happening, so this is again here, and again there, and again there, that's why we have this four in front of it. This is the first part of the integral and then second part as I described we start from the alpha 2 all the way to pi minus alpha 2 that's actually shown here so integration limit and again we have two times of that but the amplitude here is two times VDC so we need to square that quantity also and that is now the expression for the load voltage RMS and now we will need to evaluate this now we know that the VDC squared can be uh, put in front of it and this is 4 and this is 2 so they will cancel each other out and they, I mean they will then reduce to 2 so we get then 2 times VDC squared over pi and we now evaluate this integral you get now here 
alpha one, two minus alpha one. That's the first part. The second part is these these two uh, two here in the numerator and denominator cancel each other out. We get here two squared VDC squared. Take it out. We have there over pi, of course. And then we have actually our evaluation of this integral. Okay, that is all. Now we can also look at the coefficients here or the parameter or the factor so we can say let's make this exact same in order to have that i need to push here two in the parentheses so i will do that so make this two times two times so we'll get this one now i have the same coefficient so i can bring it in front and i look at how much alpha one i have and alpha two i have and also others so i have two pi i have here an alpha two but i have also here an alpha two but that will be then alpha two minus four times alpha two will be then minus three times alpha two that's as shown here and i only have one alpha one that is all here now we can further simplify this by taking the pi also here so we divide every term here in the parentheses by pi that's shown here so we keep this two times vdc squared you divide two pi by pi so you get actually two you divide everything here by pi of course you have the minus in front so this will be a plus so don't forget that and we have here now we can further simplify this by taking this out of the square root. How can we do that? Now we can also take this 2 again back, but then I need to also divide this by 2. So we actually divide each term here by 2. That's what we get. So this is now the nice expression we have. Again, we can simplify this because there is a reason for doing this. We can now take out this 4 times the uh, VDC squared. The square root of that one will be 2 times VDC, effectively. And now the formula is much cleaner and easier to follow and we just now substitute here the alpha 1 and alpha 2 in this case we need to use the radians because this 2 pi is in this case the radians so we need to convert this 20 degrees and the 40 degrees to radians and that will be shown here so we get 2 times 100 and then pi over 9 is actually our alpha 1 and the 2 pi over 9 is our alpha 2 so this is all given in radians and this will give us 156.4 volts. That is our load voltage RMS. That's the first one. Now, there is now an important uh, table coming up. This is, these are all the harmonics. Again, odd 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, and 21. We see also some uh, values which are red. So that means they are zero. So they are, are eliminated. We see here the first the frequency, the harmonic load voltages, the RMS value of those, the, uh, the impedance that will also change because of this N. And we have also the corresponding the load current amplitudes and also the harmonics and also the corresponding RMS values. This is all calculated using the values here. So for the impedance, you just use this. For the VON, you use this formula. And for the ION, you use actually just ohm flow. Okay, and for RMS, you need to divide this each frequency component by a square root of two that's also the same for the current okay this is the full picture let's now focus on more detail what we see here and why this third harmonic is actually eliminated now that can be seen from this expression if you put here for in this case n is three and also here n is three so you get three times the alpha one and three times alpha two and when you now calculate cosine of three times this 20 degrees and plus the cosine of 3 times 40 degrees, this will add up to 0, that will make this also 0. In a similar case for the ninth harmonic and also the 15th harmonic and the 11, 20, 21st harmonic. And that's interesting and also actually nice. So we get a couple of uh, harmonics that will all eliminate it. And now the RMS load current can be calculated using this column. So that can be seen actually here. So we will take all these RMS values each squared so you see actually squared 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 only the odd harmonics but we also have in general the our, the average load current but that's zero so this is gone so let's see what we have so this is zero as set but this is 11.176 that's from here let's go one by one zero from here this one 0 0.4161 that's from here 0 0.1142 that's from here etc you see actually and this will be the lead to eliminate That's the third harmonic, the ninth harmonic, the 15th harmonic, and the 21st harmonic. And that will add up to, if you take the, to it to infinity, you will get 11.185 amps. Okay.
let's collect the values here for A and B. Now let's focus now on the THT for load voltage. Now we have now sufficient information to calculate that. This is the total harmonic distortion formula. We know that this, the VORMS, we also know the first uh, harmonic RMS value over the load voltage that's actually shown here. So we just substitute here the values and you get here 0 0.1918, so 19.2 approximately percent. In a similar case for the load current, you see this formula, RMS load current, substitute the first harmonic also here for the RMS load current and substitute here the values, you will get 0 0.0401, so 4.01 or almost 4%, so this is quite small. The next one is our modulation index. Now, there is a definition for modulation index, so that means the following. We have a ratio of our amplitude of our fundamental frequency component of our load voltage to the amplitude of the fundamental frequency component of our square wave with an amplitude of 2 VDC. And that component of that square wave is then 2 times this 4 VDC over pi. Now let's see that in the formula, this is easier to see. This is the modulation index, MI. Now here we have this fundamental frequency component of our load voltage, the first. Fundamental means actually the first harmonic. And we have here in the denominator, we have the fundamental frequency component of the square wave having an amplitude of 2 VDC. This is the definition. So if I look at the VO1, I need to again look at my harmonics from my two source multi-level inverter. That was the expression. I, when you substitute here NS1, you get this expression. Now we will take this expression, put it here. That's shown here. And now if you now divide this out and then simplify this further, you get actually this pretty simple expression. So the cosines and over 2. So cosine alpha 1 plus the cosine over 2 over 2. You get now this modulation next expression. Now when you calculate this using the 20 degrees and the 4 degrees, or you get you can also use the radians if you prefer, you get this 0 0.8529. Okay. Now we have everything, so let's also look at the simulations. This is the simula uh, circuit in the simulator, so this inverter here and inverter there is actually shown here. So there's the full bridge switching, and these are the pulse generators. I will discuss this uh, shortly. Let's go first to the values. Here we have the again our RL series combination load. Here we have 100 volts, again here 100 volts DC voltage sources. Now let's go one by one. This is the RMS load voltage, so 156.3, so close to what we have. We have here 11.18 amps for RMS load current, also very close to what we have. We have here a THT of 0 0.191, so I think this is close to what we have, very close actually. And we have here 0 0.03989 as our load current THT. So, and we had 0 0.0401. So this is almost 4%, and this is also a little bit larger than 4%. So we can say this is all check and nice agreement with our calculations. Now let's now look in detail the settings for uh, the pulse generators in order, to, uh, in order to have a switching. Now these are the pulse generators for the top uh, in, in inverter, and these are the pulse generators for the bottom inverter. This is actually here. So we have actually ST1, ST2, ST3, ST4. Again, ST1 and ST4 are, are each complement and similar case for others. And this is the setting which you need to do in the Simulink. So I will show you that in detail. What you see is again the frequency and also the period, of course, 1 over the 60, 50% 50 duty cycle. You can just pick one or two volts, it doesn't matter. So it needs to switch from zero to some value. And we see here phase delay. So how do we calculate this phase delay? Because you need to add this phase delay. Now we know that must be a delay of 20 degrees. And also here, and, it, and let me also bring up this one. Now let's focus here. First one, a time delay is given by this formula, which is then alpha one over 360 degrees times the frequency of switching. This is all in uh, degrees. Now we need to then substitute here 20 degrees for alpha one, then add them up. Uh, evaluate this I mean and 1 over 1080 seconds and that is approximately 0 0.9259 milliseconds which is actually shown here so that's how you calculate your delay now in the first pulse generator one you put it here as the positive value and the second one here you put it as negative value that's shown here because they need to be shifted uh, to the left and to the right that's the reason for having a positive and a negative phase delay or time delay the next one, again, 
a similar case, but then for alpha 2, so you just 40 degrees and 1 over now 540, this will be approximately 1.8519 milliseconds. And that's shown here. Again, this is the part for the positive, for the pulse generator 3, I mean this one. And for pulse generator 4, I need to have a shifted up version. That's actually shown in for negative. Let's go now to the switching waveforms for the top full bridge inverter. This is the waveform for, again, here you see the ST1, ST2, ST3, and ST4, just uh, discussed. But I would like to show also that this is indeed switching at the right moment. You see here the uh, 1 and 2, so the label for the uh, yellow one and the label for the light blue one. And those are all here. So we have again this uh, time delay. And you see here in the box, time box, this 1 is referring to 9.26 times e to the power minus 4, which is close to what we have here. The other one is this delay here, which is this shown here, and that will be then pi uh, minus this alpha uh, that's actually shown here. So this will be then switching here to pi minus alpha 1. In a similar case, we can look at the uh, switching waveform for the bottom full bridge inverter. Again, this one labeled for the yellow one, the first one, and the second one for the light blue one. And again, for a delay angle of 40 degrees. And this was our delay at time for in, this, in milliseconds. And you can actually see that here 1.852 e to the power minus 3. So that's again verified. That's nice. Okay, now let's now look at the waveforms individual outputs because we have here a VO1 and a VO2, and that's nice to see. And we also have plot here. So this green plot is actually this red plot here. And this blue plot is this green plot here, so it's a little bit confusing maybe because of the uh, colors. But the important thing is to note that there is a label here, 1 again, and 2. And label 1 is for the red one, and label 2 is for our green one. Let's now look at the time scale here. Again, this was our 9.26 milli. I mean 9.26 times 10 to the power minus 4. That was our delay, which was our um, delay of 20 degrees. And then we have also this one, which is 40 degrees, and it was then 1.852 uh, uh, milliseconds, again, in agreement. And it's all here. Now we're getting now closer to the, our waveforms we would like to see, which are the source current, load current, and load voltage. This final one, this is our source current, red one, green one is source load current, and the yellow one is our load voltage. You see actually now the staircase waveform, that is actually the result of these two on top of each other. So this is actually the series combination of these VO1 and VO2. And what you see is again the 1 and the label 1 and 2, again here the same times. This is our example considering the multi-level two-source inverter using a RL load in series. We have also seen that the THT for the load current has decreased drastically, almost to 4%. And you see also that it's from the waveform, that this is uh, yeah, close to sine wave. This is of course not perfect, but we're getting there. And we can make this even better by increasing our delay angle number so we can also go to alpha 3 and 4 and then make it even better if you have any questions comments please let me know i will try to answer them as soon as possible see you next time in another video